everyone. I hope you haven't eaten too much food, so you will, will you won't be war, uh, bored bored with us. I hope you drank coffee before. After. <laughs> Um, first, uh, we want to thank to Nordic Roasting uh, oh. Roasters Forum for this invitation and to share with you what do we do in our farm. Our, our farm name is Finca El Puente and we can say that we are a family with passion with tradition. Why? Because I, uh, I, am, I was born in a coffee family. My great-grandfather started to work in coffee in the early 19s. He continued the tradition, then my grandfather, after my mom, and now I continue working in coffee. If you ask me now what in what else can I live and work? I don't know what to say because I can live without coffee. And why passion? Because in 1996, I met Moises and he was a man, a man with a big passion. I think it's good when you have passion and tradition because tradition you like to do what your parents did. But when you have passion, you don't think to start from zero, to do the things better and better and better and innovate. Uh, where we are? We are in Honduras. Honduras is in the central of America. Uh, and Honduras is in the heart of Central America. We are located in the west, in the southwest of Honduras. Our, our town is, the name is Pinaco. What do we offer as a Finca El Puente? Finca El Puente, we have 30 different small lots, and this year we start working in one more, so now we, are, we have 31 new lots. And it's good to have different lots because we have some lots of half hectare, we have five hectares, 10 hectares, and uh, a bigger one. That is good for us because we can offer different profiles of coffee. And I will, I can tell you how our passion starts, but I will let Moises because he's the passion side. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marisabel. Um, how or when our passion start, like a coffee farmer? Start with a small seed, but this small seed is only the beginning of the many time we need to spend in the farms, uh, start to have new crop, or the time we need to wait in for you roast the coffee, it's almost four or five years since we start the choose the small seeds. And then, of course, for the one um, hectare, we need at least 3,000 of seeds because some seeds is lost and then we need to plant in a lot. Uh, after we plant in the, the seeds, we need to wait in like uh, two months since it's ready to transplant in the bags. It's the bags is traditional way we try to grow the the seeds, the, the coffee trees, and um, we need to build some like a greenhouse, special for take care the coffee because in the greenhouse we need to maintain 
at least six months before the small tree start ready to transplant in the final field in our farms. We need to wait in uh, sometimes and uh, we need to prepare the land. And uh, you can see here, this land is a, a new farm. And uh, new for the, this uh, step, we need to wait in like uh, two years after we planted the seed. And maybe in uh, four or five years, the farms look like this. This is another uh, picture about the farms. We try to, the difference between our farms in Honduras or in some region in Honduras between uh, Colombia or Brazil is we try to mix the coffee in the middle of the forest. Because like, uh, if we remember yesterday, uh, the girl talked about us, the environment, and then we need to take care of the environment too. Because it's the way we need to, we can live, and then we can sell the coffee to you, but if we destroy our environment, we destroy the way we can live better too. And then we need to, to mix, the, to uh, keep some areas like a forest, completely forest, because another is for the, fodder, uh, the forest, we need the water. And this is one of the, in our countries, now is one of the big challenge, because we start to produce coffees in the highest altitude, and every time we start to destroy the forest, and then in the end, we don't have water. If probably, and then, I don't know, in some moment, if we don't take care very well the environment, probably we need to offer to you only like a natural coffees, because for the washed coffees, we need water. Then after like a four years after we planted the seed, we are so happy when you, we saw the trees start the blossom time. It started like this. After the one week or the rain is coming, it's like this. And uh, we need to wait in the some months. And after like uh, six months, the beans look like this. Sometimes for the, how the weather change, we have in the same trees, uh, beans, like uh, is ready to the harvest in two months, or some small beans, some small flowers, and some blossom. But we call this the crazy, like a crazy flower. And, it's, uh, and, and sometimes this is a problem for us because we need, uh, if we want to maintain this flower until cherry, we need a long time. But if we left the, the coffee cherries in, uh, in the tree, it's a problem for the some pest. Because we, maybe you know the broca, and then if we left this, this uh, uh, flower, we have a, a in the future problem with the, the broca. And after the nine months pass the, the blossom, we are so happy like uh, we are waiting now. This time is the time in the coffee is almost ready to pick. And this is one of the exciting moments for, for all. Not only the coffee producer, but it's excited is the time are waiting also for the people work in the harvest, like a pickers, because it's the time that people can take money. And then the economy in our towns is much healthy because the money is in movement. And then when the cherry is uh, ready to pick, start the process. Because in, uh, during, the, during the process, we want to have a consistent quality. 
And uh, I don't want to spend too much time about the processing, like uh, the pulping or the how you wash the coffee, because in some moment, uh, everyone know about this. Because normally we use, like uh, for the, the pulping, we use machine. Uh, now, for the some regulation in the government, we need to um, use some machines for take out the mucilage. Because if we want to use a natural fermentation, we need a lot of water. Like uh, Angel say, when you soak in the coffee, you need three times more water if you do mechanical. And in our opinion, uh, after we cup some co uh, many coffees, we know now the difference between uh, ferment the coffee in a natural way or use the machine is not too much difference in the cup. But for us, one of the critical moment is how you dry the coffee. And then we use like, a, sorry, we use like here, we, we use patios, but we try to use the patios either wet meal only like a pre-dry the coffee to remove some water outside the skin of the parchment. Before, we use the patios for dry the coffee, but some the, with the help for some uh, buyer, Tim Wendelbo, we start to do some experiment and how taste the coffee. And then in this moment, we know the coffee is not the best way to dry coffee because it's very difficult to control many factors around the day in the weather because some day is uh, sunny or then is a cloudy and the worker is, uh, or is cloudy and the worker take time to the lunch and then the sun is coming. The temperature is very, uh, is not consistent. And, and another is um, always we, we try to learn and to know about many things. And we heard about uh, some story uh, made in Brazil and how we need to dry in a coffee. Because for the producer, Normally, we are thinking only we dry the coffee. But dry the coffee means you need to dry four things in a bin. The first is dry to remove the water is in the surface to the bin. Then dry the parchment. But it's more difficult to dry because in the middle of the parchment and the bin, the coffee has some gases. And then when you dry very fast, or the heat is very strong, the gases is explode. And then in this moment is when you can see the shell of the, the parchment is like a brook. In this moment, if you dry in the sun, the sun is come direct to the bin. In this moment, you destroy the quality of the coffee. And then, we use a mechanical system to dry coffee. I know for some buyers, for some roaster, for some people, doesn't like to use too much this kind of a metal. Because normally the people use in a wrong way. In our opinion, especially when you have like a medium, uh, or you have a, some production, some volume in the production, if you want to dry the coffee only in the African bed, the system like African bed, it's impossible because you need a lot of the space for the beds and you need a lot of labor for dry the coffee. And sometimes in, a, for in, a, the, in our process, the critical moment to hire people is in the harvest time because everyone are the focus in harvest. Nobody want take uh, 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 have a time or want to go to work per day. And then it's very difficult for us. And 
but we start to use a special this kind of uh, machine we call guardiolas, but we start to work in a different uh, method. And what mean this? We start normally when we uh, work the coffee in a commercial way, the traditional way, we use only like uh, 30 hours to dry one batch. And that's mean the temperature we use normally is 80, 90 uh, Celsius degrees. But, and then we start to, to see, in this way we destroy the quality of the coffee. And we start to work in a specialty coffee. And in this way we start to reduce the heat and uh, uh, for the dry the coffee. And that mean to much longer time. Now, after 15 years, try to working in, in this machine, now we use an average one day pre-dry the coffee in patios, like mean six hours. And after this, we use an average 70 hours in the machine. But the temperature we use when the, the heat is come in this, in the entrance to the machine, maximum is 30 degrees Celsius. And the temperature in the mass is almost like a 25, 22 Celsius degrees. And that mean is almost the same, the temperature in the patios. But the difference is in the machines, you can control many, fa many factors. Like at a time, you can control the, the heat you put and the difference between patios. And we already have a very good results because we uh, talk with our buyer, especially when they buy uh, big lots. And the coffee maintain the quality until one year. And that's mean we use in a good way. But for the small lots, we can dry to in shape. And maybe uh, you can see we use blue plastic because every time we start to try to, to use in different way. Normally, the people use like uh, the white plastic or sometimes in shade they use the black material. But talking with some friend in Colombia, they made some experiment about that how is the difference in use different color of the how you cover your coffee. And they told us when you use the black one, maybe you can see the is like a, a little dark, but the quantity of heat you have inside is the same, like uh, almost the same, like is no shade. It's like you, when, or like us, when we go to the sun place in the, in the sun, we try to don't use the black cloth because we felt more heat. But the blue one, is one of the best color because is the disseminate the the light and the temperature, and it's like a, this is the reason we have the blue sky. Yeah, and then we need to only to see around us and to apply many things around us to the be better, and uh, we can we use this kind of beds. Sometimes uh, in this weekend, we start to dry in the sun. And then in after three days, we cover with shade. Or some coffees we uh, put in the uh, in sun until 10, 10, 30 in the morning. Then we cover to the la 1 p.m. And then we discover another time. And we try to use, because for us, in a, a finca el puente, the very important things is maintain the quality. 
in some way, this in means spend more money. But for us, it's more important the quality to have a lot of production. This is uh, the same picture. And um, here, you can see the difference between this coffee is dry in sun, in patios, and this coffee is dry in beds. Is you can see how the the bean the, the shell is broke, and almost all that the beans, and the sun, and you can see here. Of course, you have some, but many of them is no broke the the skin. After we uh, we uh, dry the coffee, we want to try to have a very constant evaluation. And uh, we try to, to work the coffee in a small lots. For example, uh, this is the, the reason we, you can see the, this number. Because for example, the last crop, we work like a 320 different lots. And some lots means one bag, some lots mean 25 bags, or it's different. But in total, we work like a 320 different small lots. Of course, we cup the coffee each uh, sample. Sometimes the first time we cup the coffees is all also or is only to know uh, is uh, have some problem, some uh, phenol, some fermentation, some problem in the process, or then we can uh, know for the cupping if what is the profile in the cup, and then we know uh, which uh, or the customer likes some kind of the, of the coffee. But we use two different, different tools. And we remember always with Marisabel someday, a customer told us one of the problems for the coffee producer is the coffee normal produced in a poor countries, and we produce the coffee poor too. And then tell us, you need to be professional because it's your business, and then you need to be professional. It's like you like roster. You, every time you try to study about many things around how you roast better the coffee. And then this is the, the reason we use different kind of, uh, the first step is the, the moisture. And be, why? Because depend the customer, they use his own measure. And sometimes it's different, or some is not accurate. And then we need to have at least three to have a good average about the the, the, the moisture of the, of the beans. And another, three years ago, we start to use and to, to measure the water activity. And like uh, Angel told us in the morning, sometimes it's, uh, we, we saw the tools like uh, expensive, but sometimes in the market you can find some cheap uh, tools too, like this. Because this is like a, the cost is around $150. And if you are in the specialty market, you need to left to spend some money in a bottle of wine and invest in, a, in some, good, some tools. Or with the help of the or exporter, they, they have the more accurate uh, water activity measure. And then we can compare. We know you can see this is the same sample. We have a little difference, but it's not too much. And then we try to, to dry the coffee between 10.5 to maximum 11.5. And we try to maintain and to export all our coffees between 0.55, maximum 0.59. 
because point 0.6 we read about is the point where the some mold, some yeast, some microbiotic uh, organisms can grow. And then we try to not take the risk and we try to maintain maximum 0.59. After this, the coffee is ready and we export the coffee. And now, Marisabel, continue. I remember one thing that my grandma always say, that all in our life is like the mist, you know, like the big storm. Because you have to, the things that you are in your life, you have to do step by step, because in that way, the things are long lasting. And we, as a coffee grower, we have to do the things slow step by step, trying to be which one is good, which one is not good, but that one take a lot of time. So we have been working since 1996 together, and we are growing and growing, sometimes fell down, sometimes get up, and in 2004, uh, we start to compete in Cup of Excellence, and in, we took the second place. <coughs> in that moment, we start to build relationship with buyers. And sometimes we we always say say that the buyer makes more experiments than us, and with the help of them, we have been learning a lot of things and improving a lot of things. But we know that we still are learning. We are not going to the top. We have to walk, going up hard to continue to be better. So in, in 2005, we won again the second cup of excellence. And we won the, the first place in the Q auction. Then in 2015, we got the 38th place, the last place <laughs> of the Cup of Excellence. <laughs> and, and then uh, one day in that moment, Moises told me, we have to do something different, something totally different to participate next year. And then we participate the next last year and we are we're so blessed to have the first place. And thanks to that, we start to build relationship with buyers. And one thing that we are so happy is the relationship that we start many years ago, we continue until now. And in that way, our coffee travel around the world and happy with a lot of honor working with this kind of people that are amazing, amazing people that we work with. But nothing of all the things that we do, we cannot do without a great team. We have a, an amazing worker I can tell you that they are the best workers in Honduras. <laughs> and we, we are happy to, to have them. And they continue working for us during the year. And thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> session that goes a little bit into the cupping time, but uh, I think this cupping will be easier to do that way. Um, Moises, I know you have probably around 50 varieties on your farm now. Uh, a lot of them are experimental, so you only have a couple of trees. Most of them are 
not resistant to the implants. So my first question to you guys, what do you do in order to prevent leak rust? Yeah, right. li like... <laughs> this always happens, Marisa will take over. <laughs> And you know, when we have the, the attack of the leaf rust years ago, like five, six years ago, in that moment when we, when, when we saw the farms, we were like in shock. But in that moment, we saw this big problem as an opportunity for us to grow and to know why we have that problem. And we start to see that the trees of coffee are like us. The trees need good nutrition, which we haven't done that good nutrition. We start to learn that we have to make soil tests every year. It's like us, if we eat healthy, we won't have too much disease. Then, another thing, we start to renovate the farms because it's good to have young farms, as we too. If you are young and someone comes with flu and I, and I stay there, I will get the flu, <laughs> no, not a young person. So it's, it's in that way. The farms need good uh, to, to have good nutrients, to maintain John. You have to front very good your farm because in the way that the farms has air flow and a lot of sun, the fungus, it will be more difficult that goes in. <laughs> and, and, and finally, if uh, if it's necessary, we, uh, after the 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 roya attack very hard, we need to to do s introduce new techniques and for control. And one of these is we need to walk in all or thirty different lots to check how is the incident in each lot. And then if we have like a 8% of incidents that leaf frost in some lot, we need to apply some fungicide. But it's not that we use like a every, every month. No, we start to see what lot is affected and then we apply. But because one of the, the big problem we have is that our neighbor sometimes they don't take very well the farms and the best way to transport the roya is the wind and then this is a, a big problem sometimes uh, i tell my workers okay when we are apply in our farms please apply in the farms of the neighbor <laughs> because it's better to, to to spend a little more but it's uh, we prevent some sometimes yeah i remember uh, i think it was Four years ago, you were hit a little bit with the Raya, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. with a big outbreak, and then uh, the, the result of that was that your coffees were actually slightly lower in quality mm -hmm. even three years later. Mm -hmm. This year, I think the quality has gone up by far again, so it's back to normal yeah. and maybe a little bit higher. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. And you know, even that, even that you see the farm healthy, you have to do every month. You have to go through the farm, if your farm is a square, for example, you have to go in the middle, <coughs> like zigzag, and, and cutting leaves. Eh, al azar, no sé. Like, eh, cutting like, eh, like a blinding. Yeah. Cutting, and then you start to count. From 100 leaves, you start to count, and then you see the incident, because it's better prevent than cure. Another thing I uh, want to ask you, considering it's starting to become a problem in Colombia, uh, to actually have enough workers working for you. And I know that uh, 
because you're doing selective picking, uh, it's a lot of work to pick coffee. So how uh, do you get uh, enough labor during harvest? Because you have almost 200 hectares, I think, which is quite a lot of land. Okay. Um, we, ha we have a, a, like a deal with the people. We are very blessed because almost we have enough labor in our farm. Of course, it's not because we are very beautiful people. <laughs> uh, it's because we have a, a some uh, a some deal with them. It's like this. Okay, we talk with the workers, and the first thing is we try to pay very well, because in this way, the workers are happy. If they have money, they are happy. And another is in a coffee farm, we have like a two periods. One period is in the harvest time, and the other is like a no harvest. And uh, uh, for the workers, the no harvest time is very critical, because sometimes it's a, a not too much place to work. And then we talk with them, and it's like this. Okay, it's like, uh, if you help me to pick the coffee, I pay very well. But the other thing is I try to maintain you every year working with us. And then, and for example, some another producer, for they uh, maintain, clean the, the, the land, they use uh, herbicides. But we try to, uh, it's prohibited in our farms to use herbicide. We clean only by hand. And this way we can get uh, work for the people. And uh, it's like, a, it's, a, a, like, it's worked well until now because every, uh, every time the, another producer asks us, do you have problem with the labor? Yes, because my problem is I have enough labor. And sometimes we need to, to do something different in the farms. And we try, because one of the, the other things in our farm, we have a, a lot of focus in the social situation. Because it's like a, for these people, we can live. And then if we don't have people, we, don't, we lose crop. And this work for us. And another thing, we have the bless to have a good buyer. So we have a, a different price. And it's good to share with the people that make your work possible too. Speaking of different price, uh, <clears throat> I know that you're um, kind of customizing coffees for different clients. So clients that are buying a lot will asking for dry, getting the coffee dried in Guardiolas, where microlots are on base beds. Are there any differences in the price of production of these uh, lots, or is the cost more or less the same? Because I know that you have a little bit of control of your cost. Yes, uh, of course it's different. Um, if produce the coffee, it's almost the same, the cost. But the process is the difference between because processed coffee, uh, dry coffee, especially dry coffee in a, uh, in a guardiolas is easy because you put the coffee in a guardiolas, you have one people, or one person to control and that's it. But dry coffee like a micro lots in shade, we took sometimes between 15 to 20 days, depend how is the weather. And then in this moment, if you need more labor, you need to pay more for the people because in a, the type of the beds we have, in six meter square meters, we can dry only one bag of coffee. And then we need to start to move the coffee each 30 minutes. If we have 200 beds, <coughs> it's impossible for one. We need to hire more. And this, and this point is that the cost is more expensive. And then the another is uh, it's not the same to sell coffee uh, like a uh, by container, because in by container some producer ask you only to like a 15 screen up, but 
in a specialty coffees or some specific uh, micro lots, we use 16 and up, and that means the 14 and the 15 we need to sell in a national market, like a conventional coffee, and then the cost in this moment is more expensive. But even, even, even in the Guardiola, because every year we have uh, three years working with the Guardiola, trying to see which one is the best point to, to maintain quality. And now we are using the double of hours that we used three, four years ago. So that increased too. Double the amount of time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So you need to buy more Guardiola. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> one uh, little uh, silly question, but uh, I remember because I went to one of your farms and you have shade trees on your farms, and I was asking a, a question: Why don't you plant fruit trees so that you can eat the fruit and you know you can give away avocados and fruit for the workers? Uh, can you can you tell us a little bit about the kind of social problems you might uh, have in your area? Yeah. In the beginning, we want to plant it like a trees, a fruit trees in the farm. Because in this way, we can take some and we can share with the workers too. And then the popular <coughs> trees that people plant is orange and bananas. Okay. And sometimes avocados. But we start to see, for example, the bananas. When the bananas is ready, it's impossible for us to eat a hundred bananas. But it's not a problem for me if the people take for his home. But the problem is when they come to the farm, they cut the bananas, but they put the banana tree in, uh, inside on the, on the coffee or sometimes they broke the coffee the, the some trees and then we lose the production and this time I start to quit the bananas and the orange is almost the same because the season when the bananas is ripe is the same time is the harvest for the coffee and then Sometimes we have a problems because some of the people's work with us pick the coffee, they clean in the bananas, they fell down, and then it's problem for me because now is my problem. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and then we need to send to the hospital to pay. <laughs> it, it, and they don't take only the banana they can eat, but they destroy the, ban the, 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 the orange too. And in the avocados case, one day we have a avocado in, the, in the, the, the farm, and the, the person manager that is in charge to the farm, they saw the tree, and the, the avocados is almost ready to pick. And he said to the another worker, okay, tomorrow you need to come to pick the, the, the avocados, and in this way we can sell some to help us to, to the workers. You know, the next morning, the avocado tree, they cut the avocado tree. They didn't uh, want to climb. Uh, yeah, they no, they cut <laughs> the, <laughs> and they, destroy, they destroyed the, the avocado tree, and they destroyed the farm too. And then, in this way, we tried, the, the, we start to talk with Marisabel, the best way to help them is it's better to pay better, and they, they can buy, go to the, another place to buy, and it's easy for us. <laughs> <laughs> so over to the varieties, because we are going to cut uh, a lot of different varieties on their farms uh, very soon. But uh, you've been working with uh, new and different and rare varieties for quite a while. And uh, I remember you told me a story where you started with your famous geisha that you won the Copa Express with last year. You only started with a handful of seeds. Mm -hmm. So when, when you get a handful of seeds, how long does it take 
for you to actually reach the <laughs> point uh, where you can produce, uh, you know, an amount of bags that is sellable. Okay. And uh, years ago, we know, uh, everyone know about Albert Einstein. And Albert Einstein said, why you want to see different result if you do the same? And then in our countries, it's normal. And this is what Isabel uh, are telling is that between us, is she is the tradition, I, I am the, like a passion. And Marisabel have a lot of influences, her father, and they are very traditional. And I tell him, Marisabel, no, we need to do some different. And, and another uh, is uh, some, some person say, the progress need change. But, but on the, the first thing we need to the change do is change our minds. And in this way, uh, I remember when the, the friend gave us like a 150 uh, seeds and um, he told us, okay, I need to go to the farm to see where is the best place to plant in this coffee. He don't tell us what is the variety. He told us only this is a special variety. And we went to the farm and you know, in this moment, he chose the variety. Uh, we choose. He chose the place we have a planted bourbon. And Marisabel told me, "You want to cut all the bourbon?" Oh, no. And I am telling yes <laughs> because I expect some better. But the problem is, is like a problem is we need time, and sometimes for the coffee producer, or for everyone, time means money. And uh, in, the, in this case, and in, in, uh, it's uh, the same in another varieties, we need, the first time we need to plant the 150 seeds, waiting four years to have the first crop, cop the coffee, and then if it's good, you need to wait in one year more to take seeds, and then need it another four years more to have more coffee. When you add all the years, you need like a between eight or 10 years to have another. But this is the case in the geisha. We need to wait in like eight years to have production. But this, this, uh, this situation is not like a, I, I don't see like a problem for me. Because now some of the varieties we tried in a, in a few minutes, and sometimes uh, some friends gave me only two seeds, or sometimes I have one, three. And one of the variety we want to try is mocha. And the mocha, is some friend showed me uh, uh, the seeds, and he told me, look this variety. And what variety is this? This is the natural decaf. <laughs> Can you give me some seeds? And I remember exactly, he gave me 10 seeds, and only seven seeds grow. And I decide to plant it in a garden because it's the place we can take care better. But some is very angry with me. And <laughs> because the tree for the mocha is not the beautiful tree. And then every time she told me, please cut this tree. No, we need to wait it. And finally, after four years, uh, some uh, friend, some buyer come to visit us, and the first question for her is, do you know what variety is this? Mm, yes, it's mocha, but this is ugly coffee. <laughs> Look, you need it. to cut, <laughs> you need to cut. But two weeks later, it's arrived another, and he asked, she asked the same, you know what variety? Of course, this is mocha. It's very a, a strange variety. It's produced only in Yemen. This the coffee is amazing. How many bags do you have for this coffee I can buy? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I won. And then, and since now this, uh, we start with these seven seeds, and now we have like uh, two hectares planted in this coffee. 
and <laughs> so and some of the varieties that you're going to cook, we have only one or two trees, another five trees, and then we will wait for the next year to take seeds and to plant seeds and wait for another four years <laughs> to cop and to have one amount of that coffee. And now in total, sorry, in total, we have like a 50 different varieties in the, like a garden or in the farm. And that's why I wanted to invite you here to speak because uh, I really wanted more people to be able to taste. We're actually going to use the crop draft for the cupping so we can see afterwards the results, mm -hmm. what people like, so you can get some instant feedback. Okay. Are there anyone who has any questions? We have uh, room for one or two questions before we have to start cupping. Uh, but, you know, uh, <laughs> Kaya yeah, and Jed, those are the two first ones. <laughs> <laughs> then you can talk to them later. Okay. Okay. Marisa Bela and Moises will uh, be around uh, for the event, and they are the friendliest people, so don't be afraid to approach them and, and ask questions. They, the only problem is that you might not leave because they tend to uh, be very interesting to, uh, people to speak to. Who was it? Kaya, we start with you. A very quick one. Uh, you said that you wanted airflow in the farm uh, between the trees. How far is the distance between the trees? Now? Mm. Okay, it depends. Sorry, my child, because it's not, it's not your area. Yeah, I remember normally in, uh, in our countries we planted the per, we call per manzana is another area. But per manzana, because it's easy for me, we used to plant it around three, uh, if it's sh short variety, like a catuai, like a catura, we planted 3,000 trees per manzana. And if it's a uh, bourbon, we planted around uh, 2,000 uh, plants per, per manzana. Mm. But now, like a uh, team gave me a book about um, Kenya, Kenya, and we start to reduce the quantity of trees per area. Now, for example, we use only 2,500 2, for short variety, and only 1,800 plants for a tall variety. Mm -hmm. Then we have more space, and uh, sometimes the producers are thinking about less trees is less production. Mm -hmm. And not always is true. Sometimes when you have more space and the trees can grow better, the, the, the branch, and you have more production. production. Yes. yes. More production, a less disease, mm. because the sun can go into all the branches. Mm. And when you have very close, there are no production when uh, they are very close. Um, yeah, so I saw in Kenya that they graft uh, some branches into all the root section. So mm -hmm. do you do that with, with the new varieties? This is the, the very uh, new project. We start, it's very difficult for us because normal for draft the, the, the varieties, you need a special environment for the fungus. And in the last year, we tried to do in like uh, 500 trees and survive only like a 10 trees. But we can take care very well and uh, we start to do this. We try to different varieties, mm -hmm. took the roots one variety and the leaves for another and uh, we, we start to do this. Thank you. Thank you.